Hello everyone, welcome to Sailor School. This is the second part of this GMDSS playlist and in this video we will be learning about functional requirements of GMDSS and we will also talk about C areas. Also understand basics of some GMDSS equipments and their certifications also. Functional requirements of GMDSS is a sure short question which will usually be asked by surveyor. So guys kindly pay attention to these points and understand also some surveyors will also expect you to tell all these lines in order shown here and also will ask you to uh, explain them with a few examples of each point also okay so please guys uh, place some attention over here transmitting ship to shore distress alerts by at least two separate and independent means each using a different radio communication service so for this you know that ship to shore distress alert any two different means everything you will be understanding it's just basic english examples for this is dsc digital selective calling in vhf mfhf or inmarsat epub so all these have such facilities of transmitting ship to shore alerts point number two receiving show to ship distress alerts on board ships we receive direct broadcast from shore based rescue coordination centers using digital selective calling which operate on VHF, MF, HF frequency bands. Okay. We also receive alerts from weather observation stations such as maritime safety informations using either by Navtex or safety net etc. Point number three transmit and receive ship to ship distress alerts. So on board ships we basically use VHF channel 16 or channel 13 for ship to ship distress uh, communication during radio telephony uh, through radio telephony and also will send distress alerts by using DSC available in VHF uh, MFHF also. Point number four transmitting and receiving search and rescue coordinating communication. So this point means the search and rescue coordinating communication is a part of IMSR manual as you all know. And this communication helps all vessels and aircraft that are involved in carrying out search and rescue operations. Examples are voice communication by radio telephony through VHF, MFHF or by using Inmarsat etc. Even Navtex is also used for uh, search and rescue coordinating communications. Point number 5. Transmitting and receiving on scene communication. All of you must, must be familiar with the meaning of on-scene communication. Means it is communication between the search parties which are present in a search area or vessels which are involved in search and rescue operations. Example for this are VHF, MFHF which are used for communication during this uh, search and rescue operation. Point number six, transmitting and receiving of signals for locating. Examples for this are expand radar which uses 9 gigahertz for receiving our SART signal and SART itself is included in GMDSS equipment. It is used for transmitting signals which are helpful for locating the distress personnel. Point number 7 transmitting and receiving maritime safety information. For transmitting maritime safety information we I use safety net which is available in SATC. For receiving maritime safety information, we use Navtex which is available on board. Point number eight, transmitting and receiving general radio communications to and from shore based radio systems. As you all know, for general radio communication, we use radio telephony by VHF, MF, HF or by Telex whichever available whatever equipment is there that is included in GMDSS you can use that for general radio communications but it should not include all these distress signals to communicate uh, general radio communications and all point number nine last point number nine transmitting and receiving bridge to bridge communication we have VHF we usually use VHF channel 16 for bridge to bridge routine communication also. Now we have completed the functional requirements. Now we have completed the 
functional requirements there were totally nine points okay nine points i gave you example of each point helped you to understand so when you're if you're seeing this video for the first time take some patience go through these nine points write these nine points in an order by heart it uh, by heart at least try to by heart it i'm sure this will be asked by many of the surveyors and uh, we will move on to the next topic guys uh, listen next topic is really interesting what are gmds's c areas on the basis of c areas only solas defines what gmds's equipment is to be carried by which types of vessel in this present gmds's convention it is written like that solas and G gmds's convention is also interlinked solas is like mother of all other conventions everything is always connected to solas only so solas gives us carriage requirement on the basis of c areas and the maintenance arrangements okay this c areas and maintenance arrangements together means they this both requirements together uh, will decide the equipments which are carried by the ships so see this flow chart this flow chart for your knowledge only you do if you want to take down and you understand all this uh, moving on four c areas have been defined according to the coverage area of vhf mf according coverage area of vhf mf hf coast radio stations accordingly we will be learning about this in brief now okay c area a1 it is an area within the radio telephone coverage of at least one vhf coast radio station in which continuous dsc alerting is available the range of c area 1 varies from 20 to 50 nautical miles and it entirely depends upon the height of the antenna of coast radio station as vhf follows ground wave propagation okay so as i also make sure that my upcoming video means the next video in this playlist will be on this wave propagation and their frequencies so everything i'll uh, tell you in the next video okay uh, so continuing in this video so for ships which sail so for ships which sail only within the area even such as small boats ferries or vessels doing coastal voyages the requirements for gmds equipments are as follows so these gmds equipment requirements are uh, only for uh, ships sailing in crs a1 vhf with dsc dsc means channel 70 and radio telephony navtex uh, epub sart and portable vhf in c area a2 it is the area excluding c area a1 but within the radio telephony coverage of at least one mf coast radio station with continuous uh, mf dsc alerting the range of c area a2 varies from 50 nautical miles to 250 nautical miles the requirements of vessels which are in area a2 are vhf with dsc and radio telephony mf with DSC and radio telephony, Navtex with EGC receiver, EPUB, SART and portable VHF. Now moving on to area A3. It is an area excluding C area A1 and A2 but within the coverage of an Inmarsat geostationary satellite in which continuous alerting is available. C area A3 usually lies between 76 degree north and 76 degree south but excluding area a1 and area a2 out of it so carriage requirements are vhf with dsc and radio telephony mf with dsc and radio telephony inmarsat b inmarsat c fleet 77 hf with dsc radio telephony and nbdp navtex receivers epub sart and portable walkie talkies or vhfs now to the last C area, C area A4, C area A4, it is an area outside C area A1, A2, A3, which means the C area north of 76 degree north and south of 76 degree south, usually the polar region are covered under area A4. The carriage requirements of uh, ships in area A4 are VHF with uh, radio telephony, DSC and NBDP, MFHF with radio telephony dsc and nbdp epub sart portable vhf navtex with egc receiver 
over there inverse it will will not work so sat sys will not work but cos pass sar sat communication must be available for uh, more information on this equipments in sierra a4 please do watch the videos on polar code which i made in this uh, in those i have included the functional requirements which were required for communication systems in ships operating in polar region so if you think about difference between the inmarsat and cospas uh, satellites are means inmarsat covers area between 76 uh, north to 76 south okay this equatorial region that and all it will cover but when you talk about cospas sarsat satellite it covers only polar regions polar regions which is the arctic region and the antarctic region cosmos sarsat will be in motion in uh, near the poles in circumpolar orbits they will be in circumpolar orbits whereas this inmarsat satellites will orbit the entire earth but uh, this cosmos satellites will only do the circumpolar motion above the earth's uh, atmosphere okay now we understood financial requirements over sea areas and the carriage air requirements per sea areas also we discussed now the topic is about availability of radio equipments as usual the difference between the carriage requirements on the basis of sea area and availability of radio equipments based on maintenance schemes are availability means you will be given various options like instead of two vhf we can carry more vhfs like one more vhf instead of one mf carry two mfs like that okay but in carriage requirements it says the least one vhf one mf hf etc it should be carried so this is the basic difference between the carriage requirements on basis of sea areas and carriage requirements on the basis of availability of radio equipments so that's what uh, we have come to a simple understanding okay uh, now i am talking about the availability of radio equipment because we have discussed about the sea areas etc we already discussed this carriage requirements now we are discussing on the availability of radio equipment there are three options under availability of equipment option one at sea maintenance option two shore based maintenance option three duplication of equipment one when we talk about at sea maintenance means that onboard ship must be having one qualified uh, maintenance person like uh, designated radio officer must be also present and apart from that 100 percent of space like wires semiconductors capacitors resistors must also be carried on board means apart from this qualified uh, means apart from this qualified radio officer also, also the space which are required for carrying out the maintenance of all this radio equipments must also be present on board and this radio officer must also have all the knowledge related to all these equipments number two shore based maintenance means usually an agreement or a contract which will be made between the authorized personnel who can carry out the repairs of radio equipment who are present at shore and the owners of the vessel this agreement is accepted by the flag state means it must be of a flag state standard level of agreement must be there number three duplication of equipment means on board instead of one set c we will carry two set c similarly in, instead of minimum requirement we will carry one more one more extra uh, radio equipment means it is comes under duplication of equipments that also we can do so that option also uh, is there in this so guys uh, keep note of this point which i'm talking now now you're going on board and if you want to find out which availability of radio equipment is applied on your ship which method so then where you must refer this was a question which was asked by a survivor once and the answer for this is you will have as every ship will be having its own safety or radio certificate safety radio certificate which is also known as SRC certificate all the required information will be provided in that vessels trading in C area A1 and A2 must choose any two methods in availability of equipments vessels trading in C area A3 and A4 must carry radio equipments by opting any two options of availability of equipments this uh, availability of equipments and carriage requirements on the basis of C areas where the vessel is trading so these two things requirements must be combined then only there is one common thing where is your vessel's carriage requirement so this car on the basis of this carriage requirement which comes under solas because it comes directly under solas solas is used to build your ship 
as well as solace is used for your carriage requirements for your radio equipment so then you will decide how many radio equipments must be there on board your ship minimum radio equipment with the minimum standards usually company will not spend more money on uh, extra radio equipment because once they fit an extra radio equipment for this certificate survey spares maintenance a lot of additional cost will add on so that most of the companies or the builders will not prefer so that is there so okay now we have understood in this video if you have followed up clearly until now you will be understanding a lot of topics which are prime importance uh, so please uh, study what are c areas definitions functional requirements nine points valid points you should study and uh, all this uh, other uh, availability of equipments etc so these are all questions which usually surveys will ask we discussed all these things we have come to the end of this video next video topics are frequencies propagation basic understandings of radio equipment have a good day guys please make sure to watch my video part 3 of gmds playlist to understand more briefly